of that, this is the future. Amazing. Eight, eight rapid charger stalls, all 150 kilowatts, undercover, tap and go contactless. This is awesome. Um, we're on the M6 heading north near Wigan. Um, <clears throat> this is a new uh, station that's opened last year, I think sometime. Anyway, pretty awesome. Um, yeah, blown away by how great this is. This is what we need everywhere. So we got here, we drove 110 miles and I had about 45 miles in rating, so pretty awesome range. Um, yeah, like 4.1 miles per kilowatt hour. And yeah, charging really fast now. This new battery is absolutely amazing. Just long enough to have a bit, little snack, take Bailey for a pee, and then off we go. So on one side we have 150 kilowatt uh, CCS, and this side we have 80 kilowatt Chadamo. This van will only be able to take 50 kilowatts maximum. Really nice, well marked units, with a nice bay. Really cool, and a canopy. What a novelty. Okay, we're just rapid charging here, um, just close to T Bay from this uh, Polar unit. And uh, <clears throat> I've intentionally slated this unit to a quite high state of charge. See, there we're at 90, 91%, and it's showing 145 miles. And obviously, I, I know that it is quicker to leave once we hit about 80% because the charging rate slows down. Um, but the reason we stayed is because um, the battery cooling is still running. A lot of people have been asking, um, you know, how we're going to be getting on with the 40 kWh battery because it is a known issue that it does get rather hot. Um, so yeah, this is the second rapid charge we've done today and it peaked at about um, 46 degrees Celsius, so quite, quite warm. Um, I mean, we were still pulling like about 40, 46, 47 kilowatts at the beginning of this charging session, so we weren't experiencing any sort, any form of rapid gate whatsoever. But I don't want the pack to get too hot because that's obviously not a good thing. You know, I want to look after this battery. So, since as the charging status of state of charge gets quite high, the charge, the state, um, the charging power drops. Um, so the cooling then becomes more, more effective. So since we've been here, um, the battery temperature has dropped from 46 degrees down to 42 degrees. So I'm just keeping the rapid charger running at the moment, even though we're at 95% state of charge. So we're pulling very little power, only, only about two kilowatts actually. It's ramped right down. Um, but the cooler's still running, so the battery, battery is cooling. Battery's cooling nicely. So probably just leave it a few more minutes until it's down to 40 degrees. It's, it's dropped like four degrees in the past sort of five or 10 minutes. So give it another five minutes and they'll be on our way. There we go, I found the least by a screenshot there. So you can see the black line is the battery temperature and it's dropping at quite a, quite a rate here. It's now down to 31 degrees at the front of the pack and 41 dig, 40, 41.5 at the back. It was over 46 on the, at the peak. So yeah, cooling is doing its job. Yeah, so the battery cooling on the EV200, it works whether or not the van is switched on. You can check this by, you can just leave the van turned off, go for a walk, come back, feel the AC pipes, they're totally, you know, dead dead cold. Um, what, but what you can't have is the cabin air conditioning on. If I turn the cabin aircon on, then the, the battery cooling can only um, circulate air around the battery, it can't use the AC. So by keeping the cabin AC off, we allow the battery um, heat exchanger coolant to use the AC refrigerant. Looks like we've hit some traffic, a bit of congestion near T-Bay. It's taking this little guy for a walk while we're recharging the van. Just down the road from T-Bay services. Absolute gridlock here. Here we go, ready, three, two, one. Welcome to Scotland! Hey. Yeah, I've done it all the way from North Wales to Scotland with only two rapid charges. We could probably have done it in one actually if we didn't uh, need to stop <laughs> sooner for a wee. Um, yeah, like 150 miles is quite a long way. It turns out it's further than, than I can comfortably drive without needing to stop for a, for a pee. But, uh, but yeah, anyway, it's more like we're choosing to stop rather than the van needing to stop, which is uh, which is very nice. So it gives us a lot more, a lot more flexibility basically to do 100 mile, 100 mile charging legs instead of like, you know, 50 mile charging legs. <laughs> yeah, it's been great. 
stay somewhere nice tonight to break up the drive and do a bit of swimming tomorrow before getting back on the road and uh, heading up to um, Olapool, kind of Torridon area is our eventual destination. Mm. I'm sure he'll be up for a paddle. You'll keep me company, Bailey, won't you? All right, this is the first charging stop in Scotland. And uh, what a great place. Just in this little village here, um, close to Abingdon, I think it is. And uh, yeah, there's a full charge place Scotland here, like two AC charging units and two DC charging units. Amazing setup in this car park. And they're all free to use for the villagers to use here. Um, yeah, fantastic setup. Um, yeah, and it's such a nice evening. Look over there, you can see all the hills with wind turbines on. Oh, it's so great to be in Scotland. It's been a really nice drive up. The road's been super nice and quiet once we got across the border. So yeah, looking forward to probably do a little bit more driving tonight. Um, and then uh, find a little spot to stay for the night. By, by hopefully by a nice loch somewhere. Mm. So we're just having a bit of dinner in the van now. Made some food before we left. Bailey's having his dinner. Enjoying your dinner, Bailey. Is that nice? Is that nice? Yeah, good boy. <laughs> good morning. It's actually the following morning here. So I did a smooth drive up last night. It got a bit dark and late. We just rocked up in a car park and um, went to bed close to a loch. And uh, yeah, so we're in the Trossachs in Scotland here. So we're just going to break up the drive this morning, go for, gonna go for a little run, um, probably a little jump in, jump in a loch before we carry on the drive up to Torridon. And the weather is awesome. It's already pretty warm. So yeah, looking forward to going for a swim. Everyone's happy because we're stopped for ice cream, but we're also charging, so being efficient and enjoying a holiday. Winner! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Scotland's fantastic. We're just driving along and saw this little village with this um, with these uh, charge plate Scotland 22 kilowatt units in this beautiful little village. So we're gonna stop, have a little ice cream and a coffee. Oh, charge plate Scotland. Hey. Have a charger. That we don't need to charge. <laughs> Zoom past them. Yeah. Uh, God, it's crazy having this extra range. Um, you know, we're able to drive for multiple hours without charging, which for us is a, uh, you know, quite, quite a revelation. To be honest, two hours is like my driving limit anyway. Cafe bar, um, bed. Yeah. We don't get to. We're not. We're not forced to stop and wander around these cute towns. <laughs> you just stop and have ice cream. And it's nice that's like some people like me. One thing which we saw on the drive up, which was, uh, well, Amy found actually, Forestry Inland Scotland has launched this initiative to actively encourage responsible motorhome and camper van use of forestry commission car parks. Um, there's signs to say in certain car parks that you're allowed to park there for the night, which is fantastic. The whole website dedicated to this, um, there's a whole map of them all over Scotland. So I just thought it's really, really nice in your initiative to see. Um, kind of similar to what you have, it, it feels like what you have in Europe where there's lots of like dedicated motorhome areas on the outskirts of every, quite a, quite a lot of towns and villages, you know, in, actively encouraging people to come to that area, you know, make use of the facilities, stay in their motorhome caravan and um, yeah, so you know, as, as a tourism boost, so it's nice to see Scotland doing that as well.
Wow, look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Almost 10 p.m. and the sun is still, it's still like reasonably high in the sky for 10 p.m. We're so far north now in Scotland, the sun is setting noticeably later than, you know, it does for, for the south back home. Um, just about to arrive in between Torridon and Ullapool on this fantastic little road. It's been an awesome drive over. The road here was just stunning. 550 miles from home. Sort of two, two half day drivings, driving to get here. And it's a very remote bit of Scotland, but even being Scotland, there's still about three rapid chargers along this little bit of coastline. I think it actually could be part of the um, North Coast 500, this bit. Been driving all day and we've just done two rapid charges, I think. Well, you're getting like 100, and a bit of a 140 charge. miles per charge. Um, you know, two rapid charges takes you quite a long way. Bailey's been amazing, he's been snoozing, snoozing on Amy's knee the whole time. Woohoo, we've made it to Torridon. It's pretty midgy out there. So I'm not going out right now, but there's the sun, sun setting over the bay on the west coast. Stunning. And we're in the van. It's got oh, gonna get the hob on, get some food on the go, get Betty's dinner. Cheers. That was a successful journey. Mm. Mm. Really happy to be here. I've always wanted to come to this bit of Scotland. Never did it before because it was always too far. Even in our diesel van, we're like, oh, that's way too far. <laughs> so it's great to finally be here. Yeah, looking forward to going climbing tomorrow. Stunning morning this morning. Woke up with the van. Straight down to the beach for a swim. Can't believe this is Scotland though. Feels like more like the south of France. Yeah, we're a bit worried coming to Scotland. We're a bit worried coming to Scotland that uh, it wouldn't feel like a summer van trip. It would just be like, you know, cold and wet. But this is awesome. This is perfect temperature. Yes, yes you are. Yes, he's living it. He's living it. He's living it. Packed up, ready to go. Ready to go climbing up on Goat Crag. Wanted to climb here for ages. It's supposed to be the best climbing on the spot climbing in the Highlands. Um, all the way up here near Ullapool. Beautiful day. Let's go. Yeah, that's the crag up there. And look at this on approach path. Either this crag doesn't get climbed on very much, or we've not come the right way. Thigh deep heather. We're nearly there, there's the crag. As I thought, there's a path. Goes down that way. Oh, we took a direct line up there. Anyway, this crag looks amazing. Look at that. Steep. Fantastic. Let's get going. Ooh, excited. Oh dear, so we're having a pretty good um, afternoon's climbing up there and uh, I was just, I had one go at a route, uh, fell off quite high up, so really well. yeah, I had, that, <clears throat> I had a good burn, but I thought we'd have a rest, I'd go for a swim, because <laughs> it, it was pretty hot, it was still quite sunny. Believe it or not, actually most of this is from the swim, but yeah, we right. shouldn't have bothered. <laughs> Went for a swim and we thought, oh, the van's just there, we'll go back, we'll go make a coffee in the van on the induction hub there, which we did, just having my coffee. 
and now it's just storming down, absolutely pelting it down outside, as you can see down there. But unfortunately, which is, you know, we're in the van, we're all well and dry, which is great, but I left all my rope and all my um, clips oh, okay. in the route and all my uh, climbing gear below the route. So that, that'll all be getting soaked. And I've got to go back up in the rain because we need to be leaving tomorrow to go and get um, all my uh, equipment back. Right, <clears throat> we're back on the road <laughs> after that exciting climbing finale. Um, Just a nick of time. It's obviously in the dry weather window. <laughs> Managed to do that, okay. So just about managed to get my route done. It's a little bit moist and has been midged, midged a lot, but I just about managed to hold it together before the heavens opened and uh, we had to run back to the van. And now we're back on the road, heading north to try and avoid uh, the worst of the weather. Obviously we're in Scotland, so the good weather was never going to last. <laughs> it's times like these, you're pretty happy to be in a van and not, uh, and not camping. Um, but hopefully, if we head north to um, Ullapool, then a bit further north from there, it looks better. So, yeah, wish us luck. <laughs> BBC Scotland, I love it. <laughs> Driving through the highlands. So, just rapid charging at this unit in Scowry. Uh, <clears throat> when we got here, both um, lights were showing red and we're like, oh no, it's out of action. Um, but it's just the emergency stop had been pressed in, so I just pulled it out and they all went uh, went green. We started charging, we're good to go. So even if it looks like it's out of action, it's always worth <laughs> persisting with it. Um, there is a motorhome pullover spot just down the road with power if we uh, need it. But this is actually quite um, quite a remote, quite a remote charging location. If we have a look at the map here. Um, so we're now there, right on the top tip, tip top of Scotland, a place called Scowry. And today we come over from near Gevloch. So quite, <clears throat> probably as the crow flies, not that far, but it's a very sort of windy road. I'm going to go for like a run tomorrow, I think, because the weather is now a bit more, a bit more mixed. It's a bit damp. Um, so yeah, not, not as good for climbing, but yeah, we'll do some exploring up in the hills. Amy's doing the washing up while we're Along while we're parked up. It will be sunny. A bit more sunny beach time. Making use of the time. Yeah, hopefully it'll be sunny tomorrow. Um, so yeah, heading pretty far north now. We're about to. It won't be long before we run out of country. There's not much more Scotland to go. Currently on 660 miles since we left home in North Wales. We've pretty much reached uh, one of the most western points of Scotland. Not quite, but it feels like it's been it's very, very, rem very, very remote. <laughs> I was a bit worried that um, I was going to make us drive a, a long way and uh, yeah, would, would it be worth it? And should we have just kind of chilled at home and had like a rest day in the rain? But uh, now we're here, it's pretty beautiful. So I think fingers crossed if we wake up and it forecast is as predicted and it's sunny in the morning and yeah, it should have been worth it. Looks absolutely gorgeous outside and uh, yeah, looking forward to a sunny, sunny coastal run tomorrow. Uh, so we've got some onions, peppers, aubergine, just put a bit of paprika in. I'm thinking maybe red wine, tomato, beans in a wrap. Our friend Michelle will be joining us tomorrow afternoon with her husky Hugo. So like us, she's taking two days to do it because it's a, it's a bloody long way from North Wales. Um, so yeah, we should see you tomorrow. And Bade will have a, Bade will have a playmate. You can have a husky to play with. You know, Hugo. Hugo is like his best friend, even though he's a giant husky. Oh yeah, good call. Well worth driving for a few hours yesterday. 
it is absolutely stunning here. Amy's built us some shade because it got a bit hot earlier. Baby's having a little nap in the van. Good van scenes. We've been for a swim down there earlier on. Hugo and Michelle have joined us. Hugo the big bear. We seem to have a bear in the van. <gasps> bear in the van. <laughs> oh, no. Out he goes. Hello, good morning. Right, so we've got a bit of an early start on this morning. Um, had an awesome like week, week and a half, um, having lots of fun in Scotland with our friend Michelle and her dog Hugo. Then lots of running, climbing. It's been fantastic. Had pretty good weather on the whole. Um, but uh, just thought I'd take you along for this little adventure we've got planned. So it's our last few days in Scotland. So we've been planning this. Uh, a little uh, mini adventure.